What is going on guys? Today I have just got a quick news story for you concerning AMD Vega, specifically the Frontier edition of cards which is set to be launching at the end of this month. Obviously if you guys have been following the news over the past couple months you know that the consumer RX Vega cards are not expected to be released until SIGGRAPH at the end of July. But the Frontier Edition, which is their server uh, and workstation level of graphics card from AMD, is coming out at the end of the month. But anyone can buy this card, and it's actually now available for pre-order with the air-cooled as well as liquid-cooled versions of the card. So I figured I would share this with you guys, and we can kind of talk about where the consumer level card pricing might go from here based on what we're seeing with these cards. So we can see here right now over on Saber PC, you can pre-order the Radeon Vega Frontier Edition card, which has 16 gigabytes of HBM2 for $1,199, which if you are familiar with pricing at all with graphics cards, that is really aimed directly at the Titan X cards, which sell for the same price. So $1,200 on the Vega Frontier Edition card. Obviously, as Raja Kadori has gone over in the past for us, that this is not being aimed towards gamers, but these cards will certainly be able to run games. He's even gone as far as to tell people in an AMA back in Reddit last month that he would advise everyone to wait for the consumer cards because not only they're going to be optimized better and should run games faster than the Frontier edition of cards. Now, obviously, seeing the pricing here at $1,200, that leaves me wondering is what will the consumer cards be? Are they going to try to do the same thing with NVIDIA since this is already being put the same price as the Titan X or the Titan X little p, whatever you want to call it now. Are they going to follow the NVIDIA pricing scheme and maybe put the top tier consumer card to compete with the 1080 Ti and maybe we'll see it at around $699 with another card for $499 and $399 because there has been rumors that we'll see three different variants of RX Vega. So let me know down in the comments what you think based off of this pricing for $1,200 on the air-cooled version, we will, can see, we will see on those consumer cards. I think personally that, like I was just talking about, I think that is the pricing scheme we will see. I think their top-end consumer card will release at $699, if not maybe just a little bit more than that, if, if, if at all. And the way I think they're going to be able to accomplish that is probably by having less HBM2 on the consumer cards. I'm thinking the top end card will probably have eight gigabytes of HBM2. Actually, I think all three cards will end up having the same amount of video memory and they'll be able to kind of, you know, tear it out a little bit differently based on, you know, clock speeds and things like that, maybe core count and all that stuff. So 1200 bucks. For the Radeon uh, Frontier Edition card, not is that is, is it considered Radeon? Yeah, it is a Radeon card, I guess. It's the Frontier Edition, twelve hundred bucks. Now they've also got a liquid cooled version of the same exact card, which is, are you ready for this? Eighteen hundred dollars. That is a serious amount of coin um, for just putting on a liquid cooler. That's all it is. It's like an all in one you know, liquid cooler like we've seen on other graphics cards like from EVGA in the past. And yeah, it's going to be $1,800 to get basically the same exact card, but to have a water cooler rather than an air cooler, which raises a whole lot of questions is what the hell are they cooling this thing with? Because that is a serious price premium for uh, just basically a liquid cooler. I mean, it's got nice sleeve cables, but it looks like a 120 millimeter, you know, all in one cooler. Nothing really too spectacular about it. So yeah, 1800 bucks for the liquid cooled card, but let me know, are any, any of you guys out there gonna go out now and pre-order the uh, Frontier Edition, or are you gonna wait for the consumer level of cards, which is what I would certainly do so if I was gonna buy these cards, I would wait for the consumer versions, because Raja has told, told us himself that you know those cards are gonna be better optimized for gaming, and it seems like if you buy one of these now, you're just kind of throwing money away just to get the card early, which, hey, I can understand if you wanna do that, maybe you wanna do some testing, you know, maybe you just want to have the latest and greatest, or maybe you are planning to do, you know, server level workstation type stuff that would take advantage of the Frontier Edition of the card. But let me know down in the comments below what you think about the current pricing scheme and what the consumer level RX Vega cards will cost at launch. Like I said, I think it's going to end up being $699, $499, and $399 so that they can directly compete with NVIDIA's 1080 Ti, GTX 1080, and the GTX 1070, and I think they'll probably end up, you know, cutting off clock speed or something like that to, you know, kind of tear out the card a bit to the different price points. So I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. Don't forget to leave a like down below if you enjoyed this news video and subscribe 
if you're not already for more news coverage like this, graphics card reviews, comparisons, game performance reviews, all that good stuff. We cover it all here on the channel. So if you like PC gaming hardware reviews and you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you're already subscribed, you can hit the notification bell so you can find out whenever I upload new videos. But I'll catch you guys next time. Ciao.